everybody, a quick YouTube video on uh, the Baofeng uh, radio and using it as a scanner. So um, I've been wanting to find a cheap uh, solution to, to set up some scanners for various things and um, these radios uh, cost uh, in the low 30s. I think I got this two pack of, um, this is a popular model right here, the UV5RV3 Plus is the newest version. Um, and uh, I think I had a two pack for, uh, for $64 shipped on Amazon. So a lot of people have these radios out there. Um, I've seen some other videos, uh, but my intent uh, on this video is really not a step-by-step, -step, but just a little bit of an overview uh, on some features, some pros, some cons. Uh, maybe you're thinking about getting one of these uh, and, and programming it. Um, it can be a little bit of a hassle um, getting everything to work right and so on. Uh, but I'm just going to go over a few uh, of the basics of using it as a scanner. Uh, so uh, first off, um, in order to program the scanner uh, with the alphanumeric characters like you see on mine here uh, instead of the frequencies, uh, you do need to use the scanner software. Uh, another uh, chief concern um, is you can just simply punch in a frequency on these and, and program it from the keypad. Um, and there's videos out there that will show you how to do that, um, navigate through the menu, uh, and so on. Um, but no, like I said, in order to get the alphanumeric characters in, you have to use software. The other big concern is if you're using this radio to monitor police and fire type of uh, traffic, um, there's a little bit of a concern uh, that you uh, could accidentally broadcast uh, on those channels. So one of the advantages to using the software is um, the software will allow you to delineate a receive and a transmit frequency uh, for a given channel uh, which so they can be different so you can make sure that in case anybody accidentally presses the push to talk button here uh, that you won't be breaking federal law by transmitting on public safety frequencies so uh, I've programmed this radio uh, with that very feature uh, and just because I didn't know what frequency to choose I actually chose a frequency that's used by FRS uh, types of radios. Uh, so uh, if I accidentally press the push to talk button here, you can hear the radio chirping. Okay, I'm broadcasting actually on frequency 467.56250, um, so that I'm not accidentally uh, breaking uh, any laws uh, and causing trouble for, for my local uh, authorities um, and, and so on. So uh, that's another big reason why you'll want to purchase a cable. If you want to use this as a scanner, you want to purchase the cable uh, so that you can program it. So uh, I'll just walk through a few of the basic uh, features that you'll want to set up. Alrighty, for uh, this exercise I will be using the software from Baofeng's website uh, and there are some better softwares out there uh, but Chirp is a really popular one but I didn't see a way in Chirp to program the transmit and receive frequencies uh, to be separate so there could be a way I just didn't see it uh, and so I'm using the uh, software um, from the manufacturer. So as you can see, uh, I've already programmed in my frequencies. This is, this is one of them here. And then my transmit frequency, uh, as I mentioned before, is 467.56250. Uh, and that's just to make sure that I don't accidentally break any laws and, and transmit uh, on local uh, frequencies. I always set the power to low. Uh, turn off all the tone detection stuff. You won't be needing that. Um, set the power to low. So if you do happen to accidentally broadcast, you're only broadcasting at 1 watt instead of 4 watts. Uh, and then additionally, um, on the end here, you can put the name. You only have six characters. That includes any spaces. So. Uh, it would be nice if it was a little bit bigger, but uh, 
you can use six characters. The scan add, now this is the sort of like on a traditional scanner you have the lockout feature where if it's off it'd be like the channel's locked out so it won't scan this particular channel. Uh, so I have mine set up, I've chosen uh, the frequencies that I want to scan. So uh, once you get this all set up the way that you want it, there's a few other things that we'll need to quick change. You'll want to go to the edit menu up top and choose optional features. There's a few of the default settings in here uh, that we want to change. Uh, the first one is uh, work mode, set it to channel instead of frequency. This is the default mode that will come up when you turn your radio on. So if you're going to be using this as a scanner, you'll want to switch it to channel mode. Uh, you'll want, um, under the channel mode menu here, you'll want to make sure that you've selected channel plus name instead of the default, which is channel plus frequency. And I do that for the A and the B uh, channels. You will want to uh, power saving. I've, I've turned it off. Uh, if you are interested in power saving, uh, that's great, but it, it may slow the performance down uh, of your radio in the scanning and such. This is an important one. It took me a little while to find this one. Uh, you want to set it to CO. TO is time operation, and what happens is, is after a set amount of time, as you're scanning, when it detects a signal, uh, of course it stops on that signal, but then after a specific amount of time, uh, the scanner will just start scanning again. And you, what will happen is, is you will get cut out of, of conversations uh, and miss important details and such. Uh, and it took me a little while to find that one. So you want it to be on CO, which stands for carrier operation, and it will not start scanning again until it no longer detects that signal. Uh, a few other things. I went ahead and set the um, the default frequencies. These are the frequencies that will show up when you turn uh, your device on if you happen to switch to, to frequency mode. And again, I, I put in this 467.56250. Uh, you got to change it to UHF, UHF band first uh, before that will be a valid range uh, for that field. But I put that in there just in case uh, I accidentally switch modes. Uh, I can imagine a situation where maybe my my children uh, pick up the radio and start pushing buttons, that sort of thing. Uh, or maybe I just hop in my car and, and I sit uh, pushing the button. Uh, maybe I have the radio on my belt or something like that. So just for any accidents, um, I just want to be safe and make sure that I'm not uh, breaking federal law and or um, just as importantly or more, uh, not interfering with uh, uh, any other uh, radio traffic uh, that's out there on any police or fire bands. So, uh, and again, I set the um, transmission power to low so that it's transmitting at one watt instead of four, uh, again, just in case I'm accidentally transmitting. And if you want, you can change the color of the display when it uh, is receiving. It turns blue by default when it's... Uh, transmitting it, it turns orange and that sort of thing so you can play with some of these other settings uh, but if you change uh, these other ones you will have a, uh, a good uh, scanner so I'm going to click close and before I send it to the radio I'm actually going to um, save the file it's a good habit just punched a whole bunch of stuff in I'd rather not lose it and then I'm going to go click on program, I'll plug my radio in first, click on program and make sure I choose right to radio. And you can see that it's working. And it says it's complete. The radio rebooted. So uh, now I can just double check everything here, make sure it's good. Uh, I can switch between channel mode and frequency mode. You can see on the display here that I have uh, that FRS channel. So if I um, accidentally press the button, 
or on purpose. I'm not breaking the law. If I uh, change back to, to uh, channel mode, I can uh, do the same. So uh, I programmed it. It says uh, fire north right now, uh, but I programmed it so that the transmit frequency should be this FRS channel. And it works. So uh, a couple of things, you know, a, a nice cheap solution uh, for a scanner. Uh, they are fairly durable and uh, handy to have a, a few extra scanners laying around. Like I said, uh, 32 $33 a piece, somewhere in there, depending on if you buy one or two and what, exactly which model you get. So just a quick recap. Real cheap radio, uh, makes a real cheap scanner. Uh, a few pros and cons. One is you're going to be fiddling around, trying to get the cables to work and, and downloading the software. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not a real easy uh, solution. You will, uh, you will have a couple of headaches. I, I didn't do a step-by-step. -step. Uh, I might do those in the future. I just want to do mostly just an overview of, of what you could do. Um, but I did, uh, I did have some frustrations getting uh, to the point that I'm at. So maybe a, maybe a regular scanner would be a good option for you uh, if you don't want to uh, deal with the hassle. I forgot to mention how to put it into scan mode. Once you turn it on and you're in uh, channel mode, just hold down the asterisk, which has the blue word scan by it, and now I'm scanning. I can press it again to stop. You gotta hold it down a little bit to make it scan. Uh, and there you go. Uh, one disadvantage to, uh, to these is, as I mentioned uh, before, possibly, is that uh, I can't just lock out a channel uh, without using the software. So uh, that is a big disadvantage if, if I'm scanning a bunch of frequencies and there's one that has a bunch of jibber jabber on it that I don't want to hear because uh, I'm really interested in the traffic that's going on on the other channels. Now I can manually switch to, to a given channel, but I cannot uh, simply lock out that undesirable channel uh, from the radio. So. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please post your comments and questions at the bottom and uh, share your experience uh, if you have one. Thanks.